Good afternoon. It's great to be here. I would like to talk about gamification and how it is the most overused word in the recent history of our industry, but probably also the most underused in practice. So we have evolved from a pure gambling to an entertainment-led industry. And I joined that industry in 2005 as a games product manager at a Belgian sportsbook. I knew nothing about gambling. I was and still am a PC and console gamer. Uh, I love gaming, always have. And one of the first questions that my then boss asked me is what I thought about the blackjack they had. And this was the Java applet blackjack by Netant. And all my feedback was about the look and feel. It wasn't pretty enough. It was nothing like the games I've been playing. But that didn't matter, he said. People come to gamble, not look at pretty graphics. And that's right. That was absolutely the truth back then, 14 years ago. People were gamblers. They were coming to the website to bet and win money. Now, over the years since, that has changed. The marketing channels have become mainstream. The audience has become mainstream. Your competition for your player's time is not necessarily another gambling brand. It is anything a player does to pass the time, to not be bored, to be entertained. And anything that we can add to that gambling experience to make it more fun, to make it more engaging, increases the chances that a player will play casino over binge-watching Netflix or playing Candy Crush. Gamification is the way that operators will win the retention war. It's about creating this experience, this environment, where players play the games that they can play anywhere, but they get extra value through an additional layer of gamification. This is where I think companies will be able to make a difference in the near future. This is where five to 10 years from now, we will make the balance and we will congratulate those operators who have managed to come out on top, largely thanks to the importance that they've put in gamification. So what is gamification? It's about adding elements of gameplay to any activity to make it more fun and engaging. Now, the one weakness that I've noticed amongst my peers throughout the years is the lack of understanding and appreciation of what is gameplay and how important it is to the players. And gameplay is a key element of the gambling experience. We evolved from a more table game oriented casino to a very video slots dominant uh, casino. And hard to believe, but video slots have rich and varied gameplay. Let's not forget there is an entire industry out there where people pay money to play slots without the ability to actually win money just to experience the gameplay. So even though you cannot see the importance maybe in gameplay in slots, your players do, and it's important to realize that. So who uses game gamification today? So there's plenty of examples. First example would be Duolingo. Duolingo is an application or a program that helps you to learn a new language. I'm at an age now where learning a language is a chore. I know that I should do it. I should do it in a structured way. I just don't feel like it. Now, gamification within Duolingo, it helps you do a task you don't really want to do. Through earning experience points, through leaderboards, uh, through leveling up, I can set additional goals. When I take my Swedish lessons, I see that I'm almost at level five, and I really want to be level five, obviously, and I have to learn an additional 10 Swedish words to get there. I'll, I'll just do it. So gamification helps me do a task I don't really want to do. Another example is Google. Now, with Google, when you are a local guide and you rate uh, a place of interest or a business, or you upload a review, you can also earn experience points, level up, and get achievements. 
And my better half, when she uploaded her first review, her exact words were, wow, I can level up and earn achievements. And we are now more than 100,000 views and hundreds of pictures in her local guide career. Why? Because she can level up and earn achievements. So gamification helps the user do a task he doesn't really want to do, but it also nudges a user, in Google's case, to create content on the platform, making their platform more interesting. Closer to home, we have video games and achievements in video games. Achievements in video games, they serve the purpose of extending the lifetime of a video game. Whenever you're finished with the storyline, but you would like to stay within the virtual world, you can set yourself the goal of finishing the achievements within a game. And the example here is killing 200 pigeons in Grand Theft Auto. These pigeons are completely irrelevant to the storyline. You see them, you just don't care about them. But what they do when you aim to complete this achievement is you have to go everywhere in the city. You have to find these bloody things everywhere, and they're really everywhere. And when you do so, you travel the city, the world that you've enjoyed staying in, and you do it again, but much more deeper, because you have to go everywhere. So it brings value to the player, because it gives you an extra reason to keep on playing something that you want to be playing. But besides the player, it also creates value for the platform holders. Xbox, PlayStation, both of them offer achievements across all their games. And a relevant consideration on my part is whenever I buy a game, is should I, do I want to aim for earning Xbox achievements, or do I want to get PlayStation trophies? So maybe not a first world problem that you personally suffer from, but this is the kind of dilemmas that your players face as well. So why should you care? You should care because gambling is entertainment. Players play to pass the time, and there is an incredible range of options for players out there to pass the time. An increasingly large portion of these options includes some level of gamification. Players, and especially the younger generation, is coming to expect these layers, and gambling as a whole is falling behind. Gambling operators have not had a reason to really optimize the gambling experience, mostly because it's been almost too easy to make money in our industry. But that is changing, and it's time to step up the entertainment plan. So you're completely convinced now, I can tell, that gamification is the way to go. So where do you start? So as an example, what gamification meant in gambling to me when at Quickspin, I want to go back to 2007. It's 2007, and casino loyalty programs, they're all the rage. Everybody is offering a casino loyalty program where you aim to give back 10% of the expected losses to the players. And they do this by giving points to the players. Every time that you wager 30 euros, you get one point. Whenever you have 100 points, you can cash in 10 euros. It was a very messy system. It was hard to keep track of your turnover. It was hard to then convert it to points. It wasn't even easy to get the information. And most importantly, it wasn't very fun. It was just a numbers game and big, scary numbers at that. So the concept of changing or gamifying this turned into the achievements module, where uh, the number targets got changed into chasing tangible game events. So rather than saying, turn over 3,000 euros and you get 10 euros, it's about collect three bronze achievements and you get 10 euros. It becomes a lot more visible uh, and relevant to the player. Besides that, players could also easily track their progress. They could easily set goals, and they could instantly get rewards. Now, this is an example of how you can gamify an existing program or an existing tool and make it better both for the player and for the operator. All good and well, but the main problem here still is that it's still rather static. 
Sure, we changed numbers and text into graphics and bars, but it's still not very fun, necessarily. So I think the next step in gamification for the gambling uh, industry is going to be this transition, but then adding an element of gameplay to it as well. Make it more engaging, make it more fun. And I think that's where companies in the near future can stand out. Because the problem with achievements is also visible with the operators. Today, what we have with operators is the most common gamification tool, from my perspective at least, is the Wheel of Fortune. Uh, the purpose of the wheel is to reward loyalty from the players. By certain turnover milestones, you give them a reward. It's a much better system than what we had before the wheel, which was you as a player would receive an email several days after your activity, informing you that you have a reward waiting for you on the website. The wheel is much better than that. It's a good tool, but the problem that I have with it is that it's rather basic and that it's been the advanced gamification of the industry for the last four years now. It's time for something new. And when new operators launch something exciting, something new, something they're proud about, and then it's just another wheel, I get rather disappointed. I don't think you can win the retention war by creating a better wheel than your competition. I think you win that retention war by creating something better than a wheel. So while your competition is trying to make the best looking wheel out there, I think the companies that engage with creative gamification will reap the rewards. The problem that the wheel is trying to solve, rewarding a player for their loyalty through some sort of tool, I think you can solve that in many, many different ways. My take on solving that problem is a tool called Challenges. It's an additional layer on top of the slot where players need to complete certain levels to get to a reward. Now, I will show a one-minute video of this uh, promotional tool. It comes in uh, a range of skins. We're going to look at the spring skin, so we'll see a farmer environment. Uh, and this is an extract from my highly educational and entertaining Twitch streams that I do now and then. So after the event, please give it a follow. This challenge runs for another nine hours. There's 11 levels. Each level at the top of the screen is kind of a maze that leads to a treasure. And the goal of the challenge is to get your little character, in this case it's a, a farmer's pinion, to the chest. And how do you get to the chest? By clearing away these symbols here. And those symbols here they get cleared away if you get a win and if there is in that win a queue in this case somewhere. So if this were a win and there's a queue here, this queue here would disappear. Uh -huh. All right, so I had a win and then it will look at, okay, what is your active level? Your active level is queens. And do you have any queens in your win outcome? You do. A queen here, a queen there, and a queen there. So it removes those queens on those corresponding positions in the challenge window. So how does this work? Basically, it's the exact same system as a wheel or an achievement or the old loyalty programs from before where you get points. It's turnover based. It's reliant on player's activity to reward him for his loyalty. But rather than still images or just text, we get actual gameplay in the tool where a player engages with that additional layer on top of the slot machine. So it's much more engaging, much more effective. So how this works, we have 11 levels. Each level is a symbol within the slot. The first level is the lowest paying symbol. Uh, which is the Q in this case. And what we want is we want to achieve a win, any win. And whenever in that win outcome there is a symbol from the active level appearing, then on the top those symbols would disappear. Like in this case, all the case disappear. Farmer's Pinion, super happy. He can go to his chest, 
player gets his reward. So the reason why I wanted to show this video is because I feel that in the industry, we need to um, rethink of what is possible in terms of gamification within gambling. I think we limit our thinking in terms of what is possible, allowing ourselves to get stuck on just wheels. So as a final thought exercise, uh, when you go for dinner this evening, after a hard day of staying focused, having been exposed to a variety of presentations today, you have learned how to maximize your blockchains. You can now excel in compliance. You've also learned that many people enjoy killing digital pigeons. It makes you hungry. So imagine you have the choice of two restaurants this evening. In the one restaurant, Le Pigeon, we have Francois as our chef, who is, uh, he knows his cuisine because he loves food. He eats all the time. Now, for your second option in restaurant this evening, we have Die Taube, where Hans is your chef. Now, Hans, he doesn't really like food. He thinks it's more of a functional thing. You should eat or you die, so yeah, should probably eat. Now, who do you reckon will give you the better experience? The chef who understands and loves his product, or the chef who just offers commodity products? Now, take a look at your offering. Is the player entertained only by the games that you offer, or are you entertaining the player through your website experience as well? Consider if you have the right people on board that understand that your website experience is not a commodity. I perceive the lack of understanding and knowledge of game design within operators, and you will need this type of knowledge to build good and exciting tools that players will engage with. Recognize this value, invest in this knowledge, but this will take time. So until you are ready, speak to your suppliers. All of them are upping their game when it comes to gamification. They can help you make your CRM more fun to the player. Thank you.